Good afternoon. We joyfully welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica. If you are visiting or a newcomer, kindly fill out our special welcome envelope found in your pew. Please place your completed envelope in today's collection basket. God's holy word calls us to obey our Lord's commands as we continue our prayer for the success of our 2018 Bishop's Faith Appeal. Today's second collection is for the Bishop's Fund for Latin America. Please be generous in helping our needy brothers and sisters in Central and South America. During this flu season, we invite you to introduce yourself to those seated around you in an appropriate manner without shaking hands and to refrain from shaking hands throughout the Mass. Holy Communion will be distributed under one form, the Body of Christ. You are urged to fully participate in today's sacred music by singing from our hymnal in your pews and its inserted green music sheet. Please introduce yourself to those seated around you. Please stand and join me in singing hymn number 646. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good afternoon. As we gather together, let us call to mind God's gifts and God's mercy to us and pray for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent to establish the kingdom of God here on earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call sinners to repent and to believe in the gospel. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to make the kingdom of God present to others by continuing your works. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and he and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord.
reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, but he may, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I'm telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and, and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark.
Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to take just a moment, as usual, to welcome everyone, and especially in a special way, we'd like to welcome our visitors. So if you're visiting with us, we invite you to kindly stand where you are and just uh, let us uh, welcome you in a special way. So please stand. We're glad that you're here with us today and we hope that you come back and visit us again. Uh, after Mass, Monsignor Jerry will have a, a special blessing for, for, the, uh, for our visitors and for our travelers as well. And for our visitors, we will have a gift for you to take home. Uh, just look for the welcome sign that will either be out on the plaza or at the main entrance to the cathedral, depending on, on the weather. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, we read the following statement. Faith in God, the Father Almighty, can be put to the test by the experience of evil and suffering. God can sometimes seem to be absent and incapable of stopping evil. I think that we can all in some way relate to this uh, statement, especially during times where we ourselves are going through a difficult time or when our loved ones are going through a difficult time. And at times, even when we know that the, that the uh, a stranger is going through a difficult time. In 2012, I believe, we had a priest uh, here, Father uh, Gary Thomas, here in the Cathedral Basilica who came to speak to us about exorcisms. The, the Cathedral Basilica, for some reason, was packed for that event. I've always wondered why so many people attended. I believe that one reason, just one of the re many reasons, I'm sure, is because we have an inner desire to know and to experience God's power over evil in a more visible way. Even though God asks us to have faith, but we're always looking for a sign that He is present, that He is with us. In last weekend's Gospel, Jesus announced that the kingdom of God is at hand. In today's Gospel, he makes the kingdom of God 
more present. He makes the reign of God more visible to us. These are the things that, or there are two things that stand out in today's gospel. His teaching with authority, and of course, his power over evil. But it is very clear that there is a connection between his teaching and his power to dispel evil. His words have the power to accomplish what they communicate. He is able to cast out the unclean spirit by simply using his word. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This tells me that his word has authority right now. Jesus still has power over evil today, especially with his triumph over evil at the cross and the resurrection. What Jesus does today in this gospel, Jesus can do right now. God created everything that exists by simply speaking it into being. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. But he doesn't only have power over evil. He has power over everything. Everything belongs to God and is for God. He has power over sickness and disease, addictions, and everything that we go through in, in our lives. He has power over that. All he has to do is to say the word and we are healed. He said that nothing is impossible for those who believe. He is able to do more than we ask or imagine. So the message in this gospel is not just to remind us about the authority of Jesus and how he has the power to cast out demons. This is a reminder to us that God is still in control. It gives us hope in a world where sometimes it seems that evil is winning the battle. It gives us a glimpse of what the kingdom of God will be like when Jesus returns in glory. The catechism also says the following, God's kingdom shines out before men in the word, in the works, and in the presence of Christ. It also says that the church, we, the people, endowed with the gifts of her founder, Jesus Christ, and faithfully observing his precepts of charity, humility, and self-denial, receives the mission of proclaiming and establishing among all peoples the kingdom of Christ and God, and that the church is on earth the seed and the beginning of the kingdom. This means that, that we, the believers in Jesus Christ, make the kingdom present by continuing his work here on earth. We have the authority and power to bring hope to others. We can bring the presence of Jesus Christ to others. What a blessing. One way in which we can bring this hope to others is through our bishop's faith appeal. And at this time, I'd like to invite our BFA parish chairpersons for this year, Debbie and Bill Geyer, who will be sharing with us a little bit more about the BFA. Thank you, Deacon Flint and Father Jerry. Good afternoon. As Flint said, we're Debbie and Bill Geyer, 
You probably know us, particularly here at four o'clock, because this is, this is our time zone. We have been married for 45 years and have two children and four grandchildren. One of the greatest blessings we have at this time in our lives is that being retired, we have the ability to say yes when asked to do or help around our church and community. We have chosen to get involved in this great parish right here at our beautiful Cathedral Basilica. We're involved in minister as a lector, Eucharistic minister through RCIA, a program that is especially dear to us since that's the program that got us here today. Through Cathedral Ladies, Bible study, Acts retreat teams, and many other aspects in the life of this vibrant parish. As Deacon Flint has said, we are the parish chairpersons for this year's Bishop's Faith Appeal. This is Education Weekend, and so we have come to share some information with you. There is also another couple from our parish directly involved in the Bishop's Faith Appeal this year, Erica and Brian Johnson. They have been named the new participation chairs for the diocese. The Bishop's Faith Appeal has taken place in our diocese for more than 30 years. It is designed to make possible the vital daily ministries and programs of our diocese that care for the people of every age group and need throughout Southeast Texas. To be exact, it helps to fund 18 ministries and Catholic charities. In today's bulletin, through Father Jerry's weekly pastoral message, and through a mailing that each family in our parish should receive this week, you will see how our annual Bishop's Faith Appeal allows us to reach out beyond our parish boundaries through pledging our support to the many very important ministries and programs of our diocese. The Bishop's Faith Appeal helps us as Catholics to see that we are a broader church that is universal. The theme of this year's Bishop's Faith Appeal is empowered to share. The verse chosen to represent that theme is Philippians 4, 13 and 14. I have the strength for everything through him who empowers me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. How appropriate is this for our communities to hear after the devastating effects of Harvey this past year? Many of you received assistance from some of these ministries supported by the Bishop's Faith Appeal, and many of you helped others in their distress. At the heart of the Bishop's Faith Appeal is the commitment that our diocese and the Universal Church has to address the issues that Catholics everywhere should be concerned about. There are many programs supported by the Bishop's Faith Appeal. We'd like to share with you what they do and the people you are touching with the message and ministry of Jesus when you make your pledge to this year's appeal. Think about these examples. While you are eating your breakfast or preparing for work, a group of Catholic men and women in Port Arthur are preparing to feed the homeless and the hungry at our hospitality center. That happens 365 days a year through their tireless efforts. While you were at work, a young girl was trying to decide whether or not to keep her unborn baby. The counseling she receives will mean the difference between life and death for that child. While you were shopping for the needs of your family, our church in Southeast Texas was offering the teachings and moral values of Christ and the church as they learned to have a deeper spiritual relationship with God through prayerful lives and celebration of the sacraments. While you were trying to decide where you were going for a long weekend, <clears throat> men like Deacon Flint or Deacon Larry were studying to become permanent deacons in our diocese. While we were buying new clothes, our diocese is helping settle immigrants and displaced families, making sure they are housed, clothed, and fed. None of us can be at all places at once, so our pledge to the Bishop's Faith Appeal this year makes it possible for someone to be there to help others, for supplies to be purchased, for food to be bought. Remember again this year's theme, Empowered to Share. It is not only a theme, it is truly what God has called each and every one of us to do. Next weekend is Commitment Weekend. 
but don't wait if you're prepared to submit your pledge this weekend. The pledge envelopes are in your pew. This week, we ask that you prayerfully consider your commitment to this year's Bishop's Faith Appeal and think about the theme, Empowered to Share. Read, read the Faith Appeal materials that are in our bulletin, materials that would be mailed to you this week from our parish, and by reading about the many ministries supported by the Bishop's Faith Appeal in our East Texas Catholic newspaper. Please remember that your pledge is critical in reaching out beyond the confines of our parish with a loving care of Christ and the church for the needy in our diocese. So let's take a minute together to look at the envelope to make sure we understand it. In the upper left corner is the area for the credit card information for those of you that choose that method of payment. There are two line items for amounts. The first line is for your overall pledge with the second line being the amount of your pledge that you would be paying today. The next area allows you to choose how often you'd like to be billed for the remainder of your pledge. And you can choose to be billed monthly or quarterly, whatever works best for you. The next area is for your name and contact information. Please be as legible and as detailed as possible. You'll notice that once you sign off on the signature line, there is no other information below your signature that you have to deal with. After Mass, Deb and I will be in the back of the church or on the plaza to answer any questions you may have. Also, please feel free to call upon us at your convenience. I'll thank you in advance for your pledge. God has been good to all of us here. Sharing with others is part of Jesus' ministry that we are all called to take part in. Thank you, and may God bless you for your great charity commitment to this year's Bishop's Faith Appeal. Thank you, Debbie and Bill. Uh, Bill is uh, studying uh, for the permanent di diaconate. Uh, they just began the classes. And so uh, after retiring, uh, uh, that uh, they've decided to, uh, to really get involved in the church. So uh, when we, uh, whatever we do through the Bishop's Faith Appeal, is continuing Jesus' ministries. That's what it is. Jesus working in our world today. Let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us continue our prayer to the Lord. for our universal church, for peace and harmony among all nations, and for the unity of all who believe in God. We pray to thy Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, suffering, poor, elderly, and unemployed, for religious liberty, 
and for the respect of all human life. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For marriages and families, especially those facing difficulties. For vocations and true biblical stewardship. For the eternal life for those who have died, especially Pauline, and for those who grieve. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For travelers, that all of us may demonstrate an understanding that we represent the Catholic Church to the Southeast community so that we may share with those in distress and for our own intentions. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. Kindly join me in praying our Bishop's Faith Appeal and Stewardship Prayer, which is found inside the back cover of our Maroon Worship Aid. O oh God, creator, loving Creator and source of all that we have, Thank you for the many gifts you have given your people, our parishes, and the Diocese of Beaumont. Grant us a spirit of true Christian stewardship so that we may open our minds to the gospel message, open our hearts to conversion, open our hands that we might freely share the gifts you have bestowed upon us. May sorrow, poverty, and poverty be diminished in our diocese because we have responded with Christ-like love and generosity. Gracious God, send us your spirit to accompany us on our journey to stewardship. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We now invite our children to bring their gifts for Jesus and place them in the basket at the foot of the altar. Also, please join me in singing hymn number 854.
my sisters and my brothers that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God our Almighty Father O Lord our God who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty grant we pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Curtis our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Pauline, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, her all good and holy husband, Joseph, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, the martyrs, Saint Anthony, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you are in my word, but only for you. We believe that the most blessed sacrament of the altar is the true and full presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. As Catholics who are in the state of grace come to Holy Communion, those of other faiths are also invited to approach the altar with hands over their hearts and pray with the priest for the unity of all God's people. The body of Christ. Please join me in singing hymn number 824. The body of Christ. 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 Those who
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. There will be an important First Communion parent meeting this Wednesday at 6 p.m. in our Cathedral Center. Registration forms for our March 15th through 18th Teen Acts Retreat in Chester, Texas are available in today's bulletin. Bishop Barron's seven-week scripture study series on David the King will begin on Wednesday, February the 7th at 10 a.m. in our chapter room. An optional study guide will cost $25. Kindly sign up at our Easter candle today and see today's bulletin for more details and details about our Bible study on Thursday evening. Help is needed to bake cookies and other tasks with our March 16th St. Joseph's Day celebration. No experience is needed. There will be a meeting for volunteers this Thursday morning at 9 a.m. and all who would like to bake cookies are urged to help until 3 p.m. in our center. Lunch will be provided. Please bring an apron and a small knife. Kindly sign up today after Mass near the Easter candle and see the bulletin for more details. This week is Catholic Schools Week. All are invited to participate in our Catholic School Week Rainbow Mass this Wednesday at 10 a.m. with Bishop Guillory. Our Cathedral Basilica School has raffle tickets available on our plaza today for a new Chevy Cruze car. Donations are $5 each or five for $20. Tomorrow, from 11 a.m. to noon, all are invited to tour our school followed by a parent appreciation program in our school gym at 12 noon. Our school has gumbo available in our center from 11 a.m. and 12 noon for $10 per quart. Before, before leaving, kindly tidy up your pew for the next Mass. Thank you. Uh, we thank Almighty God that we have a school 
and that uh, we are continuing Catholic education here in our parish. So we thank God for that. And we entrust to Lucy and Don Restivo uh, our infant of life as they pray for respect of all human life from the first moment of conception to the moment of natural death in their homes and that we also pray for that intention in our homes. I invite all those who have, uh, are visiting and all those who will be traveling during the coming week to kindly stand and receive a special blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you safety in your journey. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And through the prayers of the Holy Mother of God, together with all the saints, especially our patron, Saint Anthony, may the Lord bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful evening, and uh, we wish uh, our organist uh, uh, a happy birthday. Uh, he's hit 60 now. <laughs> And he's been here longer than I have. <laughs>